Hi students, this is Dr. Ways, and welcome to your lecture on the brachial plexus and axilla. So first an overview of what the brachial plexus is. So uh, running from spinal nerve C5 to T1, the brachial plex plexus is an inter-networking of these spinal nerves uh, sorting and recombining into the nerves that go down into the arm uh, and supply cutaneous sensation and muscular innervation to the muscles and skin that are in the arm. All right, so what we're going to do is see the anterior rami that they start, the brachial plexus starts from, uh, how they are sorted and recombined within the plexus itself, and then finally, what the nerves are that are coming down and uh, keeping in mind what spinal nerves that they originate from. All right, and the importance of the brachial plexus is that injuries to the neck or shoulder can compromise uh, sensation and uh, movement or uh, result in weakness in the upper limb. And uh, one of the two of the places where this happens is one when a baby is being delivered and there's uh, problems with getting the shoulders out which is referred to as shoulder dystocia uh, can result in brachial plexus injuries and uh, problems with the arm in which uh, that injury occurred or that dystocia occurred and the other is um, traumatic injuries from usually uh, sports or work-related injuries uh, that affect the neck or the shoulder and result in uh, inability to use uh, one or various parts of your arm effectively. All right, so here's a map of the dermatomes of the brachial plexus. Uh, so you notice that the cervical vertebrae uh, innervate the out or the lateral portion of the arm, and notice this is person standing in anatomical position, uh, whereas the thoracic innervate the medial portion of the arm. All right, so um, when we look at the hand, the hand is strictly innervated by the uh, cervical spinal nerves. For a broader picture of the dermatomes, please go back to the uh, second lecture on the thoracic wall uh, and look at the dermatome slide uh, I think it's slide 5 on that lecture and here's some general movements to consider when we're talking about testing which my the myotomes of uh, the brachial plexus so having a patient abduct the abduct the arm that tests C5 uh, flexion of your digits so you know grasping would be C8 uh, just like the toes uh, we use the middle finger as a midpoint and anything taken away from that midpoint is a deduction and anything brought back towards is a deduction so that tests uh, the first thoracic nerve and then flexion of our elbow tests C5 and C6, whereas extension of our elbow tests C6, C7, and C8, uh, primarily C7 and primarily C6 with the flexion, which is why it is not in parentheses. All right, again, so you can look at innervation in multiple ways. You can look at it from the roots of the uh, the spinal nerves or you can look at it from the actual nerves that are innervating that region and so if we look at specifically at the nerves uh, our axillary nerve uh, will innervate our lateral arm and keep in mind that these pictures down here these are cutaneous sensations anterior and posterior so lateral arm supplied by the axi axillary nerve uh, lateral arm and shoulder region. Uh, radial nerve supplies the lateral arm just superior to the elbow and elbow joint and then down along the posterior lateral portion of the arm. Uh, the musculocutaneous nerve 
uh, lateral portion of the arm on the anterior side. Radial nerve, uh, the lateral portion of the thumb, and the uh, lateral dorsal surface of the hand. Ulnar nerve, medial surface of the hand, uh, medial side of the hand, dorsal and palmar surface, and then T1 and T2, although T2 is not specifically part of the brachial plexus, uh, would be the medial arm of both anterior and posterior. Uh, for cutaneous sensation, if we look at the major nerves that supply muscles, the musculocutaneous nerve uh, would supply all muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm, median nerve, uh, most of our forearm flexors, as well as our thenar muscles, and thenar refers to thumb, or more specifically, the ball of the thumb. Uh, so here's the median nerve right here. And then the radial nerve, all muscles in the posterior compartment of the arm and the forearm, uh, so on the uh, back side of the arm. And then, uh, so the radial nerve would be here running laterally, and then a dorsal nerve running medially. Uh, ulnar nerve, most of the intrinsic muscles in the hand, so the ulnar nerve specifically goes to the hand, uh, as well as some of the uh, forearm muscles that control the hand. All right, so this is going to be a really important summary slide to come back to if you're studying and you forget, all right, where do these nerves go to? What muscles do they supply? This will give you a general overview of uh, where you should be looking. All right, so looking at the structure of the brachial plexus, we divide the brachial plexus into different uh, segments. So we have the roots, uh, which are the anterior rami, so the arms that are coming out of uh, C5 to T1. The trunks, uh, and notice that they are arranged in superior, middle, inferior, and so that's as you're looking at it, you have your top, middle, and bottom uh, in their arrangement. <clears throat> the divisions, and the divisions are anterior or posterior because some nerves are closer to the anterior plane and some nerves are closer to the posterior plane. And then cords, and cords are divided into our uh, medial, lateral, and posterior, so behind that. This image is from your bare bones uh, workbook and this is the beginning of uh, starting to understand uh, the brachial plexus and its various uh, parts. All right, so one habit I would encourage you to get into for studying is start drawing this brachial plexus and know those drawings. All right, and this is just really step one of those drawings. So first of all, we need to uh, start with our roots, so our anterior rami, uh, draw C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1, all right? And they start to come together, all right? When we get to the trunk region, all right, we have our superior trunk at the top, middle trunk in the middle, and an inferior trunk at the bottom. All right, the inferior comes from a combination of C8 and T1, the middle trunk is just C7, making it easy, and the superior trunk is from C5 and C6. All right, so already we start to see them combining in the trunks. So the trunks are the first combining level. All right, and then we get to divisions. So you notice the superior trunk divides into the anterior and posterior divisions. So the anterior and posterior divisions of the superior trunk. The middle trunk has an anterior and posterior division, and the inferior trunk has an anterior and posterior uh, division. All right, so uh, notice that, again, the anterior is in front of the posterior, uh, which is why they're named that way. All right, so uh, the anterior would always be more toward you and the posterior more away from you. All right, and then these divisions will then start recombining into cords. All right, so your superior, your, the posterior division of your superior trunk 
the posterior division of your middle trunk and the posterior division of your inferior trunk will form your posterior cord. All right. The anterior division of superior trunk and the anterior division of your middle trunk will form your lateral cord and your medial cord will be formed from your anterior division of your inferior trunk. All right, so making that uh, a little bit easier. All right, so keep in mind that the cords are already starting to head down the arm. And so that's why they're called lateral because it'd be on the lateral part of the arm, uh, the posterior part of the arm, and then the medial part of the arm. So you have nothing anteriorly, but they'll be on the lateral, medial, and posterior. All right, and then the lateral cord is gonna divide into uh, terminal nerves uh, on its own. Uh, it'll combine with the medial cord to form another nerve we'll get into in the next slide. The posterior cord will continue on as a specific nerve, and the medial cord will continue on as a specific nerve as well. So now we're going to add a little more detail. So I'm not going to go through all of the uh, roots, trunks, division cords, and terminal nerves again. Uh, but we'll start with the terminal nerves. Um, so that lateral cord would divide into your musculocutaneous. All right, and remember a few slides back, we talked about what specific, uh, what general group of muscles that, that goes to. The medial cord and lateral cord will go to form your median nerve. All right, so lateral cord and medial cord form your median nerve. Your posterior cord will form your radial nerve and your medial cord alone will form your ulnar nerve. All right, and that makes sense because the ulna is going down the medial side of your arm. The uh, radial nerve is going down the lateral side of your arm and the median would go right in the middle. All right, so eventually that's gonna cross over and be right in the middle between the radius and radial and ulnar nerves. All right, and then you want to start uh, getting a feel for uh, the other branches that are coming off. So uh, if we work our way backwards, also coming off the lateral cord would be our lateral pectoral nerve. And we'll talk about the muscles that we, these go to later on. Coming off of our posterior cord, we have the axillary nerve. Uh, and then we also have our inferior sca subscapular nerve, our thoracodorsal nerve, and our superior subscapular nerve. All right, and at this point, uh, students, start to feel, oh, well, do I have to know all these? Uh, this is an awful lot, yes. Uh, but if you keep drawing this and keep practicing these uh, drawings and over and over again, you'll eventually get to where this just comes to memory. And then especially once you start connecting it to muscles, uh, it'll get a lot easier. So yes, this is something you need to know and you will be tested on this. All right, so coming from the medial cord, uh, you have the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, the medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Uh, so notice we talked about forearm and arm, so that suggests like the leg, uh, the thigh and the leg were separate, the forearm and the arm are two separate entities, and the medial pectoral nerve. Uh, the good news about this specific group is that they tell you what cord they're coming from and where they are going to. All right, uh, nothing is coming off the division. So there are no extra nerves coming off of the division. So you can completely write that off in terms of extra nerves coming out and going to places. But our trunks are gonna have our suprascapular nerve, our nerve to subclavius, which is nice because it tells you exactly where it's going. Uh, and then the roots have our dorsal scapular nerve, uh, a contribution to the phrenic nerve, and remember what the phrenic nerve controls, your diaphragm. Uh, and coming from C5, C6, and C7, we have our long thoracic nerve. All right, so um, like, so this would be step two. So like we said, as we said in the previous slide, step one would be just drawing 
uh, the roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and terminal nerves. Step two would then be adding the names of the uh, terminal nerves as well as the accessory nerves that are coming off of the cords, trunks, and roots. All right, so now we're gonna take this conceptual model and look at it in a more realistic way of how it's organized. So here are all of your roots right here. C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1, okay? And then here would be the trunks, uh, superior, middle, and inferior. All right, here is the anterior division of the superior trunk, the posterior division of the superior trunk, anterior division of middle trunk, posterior division of middle trunk, and posterior division of inferior trunk, and anterior division of middle trunk. So notice that the posterior divisions of each of these trunks go behind or go posterior to the axillary artery. So another way to look at this then is all the posteriors are gonna combine and form your posterior cord and that is gonna stay behind the axillary artery. In fact, uh, if you go back to the previous slide, that posterior cord is uh, specifically behind the second part of the axillary artery and the lateral and medial are arranged on either side of the axillary artery. Uh, so uh, the anterior cords of the superior and middle would make up your lateral cord and then the anterior uh, portion of your inferior trunk would make up the medial cord. So again, you're starting to go down the arm at this point and you're uh, going to go lateral and medial and then posterior to the second part of the axillary artery. All right, and then we're going to have our uh, terminal nerves, our musculocutaneous, our uh, lateral and medial cords are going to combine to form the median nerve. The posterior is going to continue on, oops, the posterior is going to continue on as the radial nerve and then the medial is going to continue on as the ulnar nerve. All right, and then you see the various branches coming out uh, from the posterior part and the uh, uh, behind the axillary artery rather and uh, out of the different other different uh, cords and trunks. So this picture right here, and let me erase uh, most of it, uh, shows you then, you know, how the, all of these are arranged in uh, a real setting as opposed to this stylized setting right here. Uh, so it gives you a better appreciation of why they're organized that way, uh, because you have this axillary artery that is uh, running in between all of the parts of the brachial plexus. All right, so this picture is showing you some of the different um, terminal branches coming off of the brachial plexus. So you have your dorsal scapular nerve coming directly off of the C5 anterior rami. Uh, you have your nerve to subclavius coming here off the superior trunk and your suprascapular nerve coming off of the superior trunk as well. Uh, the phrenic nerve or the C5 branch to the phrenic nerve coming down right here and of course that's going to go down to uh, the diaphragm and then our long thoracic nerve coming from contributions of C5, C6, and C7 uh, and notice that the long thoracic nerve is going down here along the lateral portion of the thoracic cavity. All right, so then we have our large lateral, not large, lateral pectoral nerve uh, coming off of the lateral cord. 
our musculocutaneous nerve coming as a terminal nerve from our lateral cord, medial pectoral nerve coming from our medial cord, our medial cutaneous nerve of the arm coming from the medial cord, and our medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm right here, also coming off of the uh, medial cord. And then our ulnar nerve would continue on as a terminal nerve uh, from the medial cord. All right, and then right here we have the medial cord combining with the lateral cord to form our median nerve, which is a terminal nerve. And of course our radial nerve is not shown in this picture because it would be behind the axillary artery going off to the uh, lateral side of the arm. All right, and it's this slide that's gonna show you the, the everything coming from the posterior portion. So here is your uh, superior subscapular nerve, your inferior subscapular nerve, and your thoracodorsal nerve coming from our posterior cord. Uh, axillary nerve also coming from the uh, superior portion of that posterior cord. And then the posterior cord continuing on as the radial nerve and you notice it wrapping around the humerus and eventually it's going to come around and head uh, downward laterally along the arm. Alright so the next few slides I'm not really going to go over uh, but what it but I will tell you what they're showing you um, is the muscle that's innervated where the origin is so which part of the brachial plexus and where its original spinal segment came from. All right, so uh, what I would recommend is when you draw the picture of the brachial plexus, uh, that stylized version that we did in two different steps, um, when you label it, label the muscle there too. So what you'll start doing is getting an appreciation for which muscle or which nerve goes to which muscle. Um, if it's easier for you just to look at it from this table, then by all means, just use this table. But uh, really it's uh, combining them, which is your ultimate responsibility. So you will have to know which muscles uh, these go to. Um, and then, you know, to make it easier, go back to slide four and look at the musculocutaneous nerve and you see that the musculocutaneous nerve goes to all muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm. So if you go through this table and you see muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm, the arm, not the forearm, uh, then you know that those are gonna be supplied by the uh, musculocutaneous nerve. And then you've already done the diagram so you know what the musculocutaneous nerve uh, traces back to in terms of the great brachial plexus. But really, it's up to you. Find the best way to combine uh, the function of the nerves from the brachial plexus to the uh, structure of the brachial plexus itself. So again, this is continuing. Uh, again, uh, look at the function, look at the muscles, uh, and then the branch of the brachial plexus that it's coming from. Continuing on here, notice that there's an additional column right here showing you cutaneous sensation and which branch of the brachial plexus is supplying cutaneous sensation and to where. All right, continuing on here, uh, and what you notice is that we are moving slowly down the arm to the forearm in the hand, as well as further down the uh, nerve roots. And of course, this would be the final slide uh, ending up with the radial nerve. Now we're going to move into the axilla or the axillary region and the more common term for this is our armpit. So what it is is it's a, a pyramid shaped area that like other regions we've discussed like for example the femoral region has specific uh, boundaries and uh, 
structures that run through it. Uh, so we'll go about this talking about the uh, different areas and the structures uh, that are associated with it. So first of all, uh, in gray here, you see that there are walls. So we have the medial wall that's against the thoracic cage, the anterior wall, which would of course uh, be covered by skin, the lateral wall, which borders on the humerus, and then the posterior wall, which then of course would be uh, associated uh, covered by skin in the posterior region. Uh, and then you notice the skin right here, all right, which would make up the actual armpit itself. So the armpit would be in here. The area that is uh, surrounding that armpit would be our axilla proper. All right, so that skin, uh, that's where, you know, your axillary uh, hair would be. That would be the uh, floor of the axilla. We have our inlet, so where structures are going to be going into the axillary region. Um, and part of those, some of those structures are going to head in through what we call the axillary sheath. So there's a sheath of tissue that is surrounding uh, arteries, veins, nerves, and lymphatics that are going to be going through the axillary region. All right, and this picture here is going into more detail about what is within the axillary region. So um, if you look in several places, they're going to give you slightly different ways of looking at this. What I recommend is going to page 288 of your bare bones book. And there is one page, chapter 39, on the axilla, and it shows you where the boundaries are and what the contents are within the axilla and that is the uh, the basics of what you need to know for uh, the axillary region. So this picture right here is kind of showing you the boundaries of where we are. This would be the posterior, this would be the anterior. How do we know that? Well our pectoralis major is anterior um, and it shows us the boundaries, uh, the first rib, the <clears throat> excuse me, serratus anterior uh, forming the medial border, subscapularis forming the posterior border, uh, teres major and latissimus dorsi forming the uh, part of the lateral border and posterior, and the pectoralis major and minor forming the, an forming the anterior uh, border. Uh, then of course the scapula and humerus forming the bony parts of those areas. All right, associated with the humus, we have the long head with biceps brachii, in this groove here, uh, short head of biceps brachii and caracobrachialis here anteriorly. And within the uh, sheath that we talked about in the previous slide, the axillary sheath, what we have is the axillary artery, and notice that that is more lateral, the axillary vein, which is medial, and then the cords of the brachial plexus. So you have your medial cord, your lateral cord, and then your posterior cord, because remember we said that those are arranged around the axillary artery. Uh, and so this would be more medial, this would be lateral, and that would be behind posterior. All right, so this slide is showing you the axilla axillary artery, uh, specifically within the axillary region. And notice that there are three parts. We've already talked about the second part of the axillary artery, in reference to that is where the cords of the brachial plexus are going to be located. All right, so where's the first part? Well, the first part of the axillary artery goes from uh, the physical division is the uh, pectoralis minor right here uh, to the lateral margin of the first rib. So lateral margin of rib one to the pectoralis minor would be part one. Uh, across or basically posterior to the pectoralis minor would be the second part and then the third part would be from the posterior border of the pectoralis minor to the uh, posterior border of the teres major uh, that would be the third part uh, before it becomes the axillary artery 
it is the subclavian artery. So I want you to notice that uh, the artery hasn't changed. It's just the location in which the artery courses through that changes that gives it its name. So it's a subclavian artery when it's underneath the clavicle, hence subclavian. It's the axillary artery when it's going through the axillary region. And then it becomes the brachial artery once it is in the arm. All right, so from the lateral margin of the first rib to the lateral border of the teres major, or not lateral border, but lower border of the teres major, inferior border, uh, that's where your axillary artery is going to be. And there are several branches coming out of the axillary artery uh, that are important, which is why we divide it into regions uh, or different parts. So in the first part, you're going to have your superior thoracic artery coming out and your thoracoacromial artery coming out. And of course, those are going to go to muscles in the thoracic wall as well as to the shoulder. Uh, in the second part, what you have coming out is the subscapular artery, which is going to go to uh, muscles that are in the subscapular region. The anterior circumflex humeral artery uh, coming around here. All right, anytime you see circumflex, you could, should think, all right, that's going around something. So here it's going around the humerus and the lateral thoracic artery, right, which is gonna go to uh, inferior artery, or inferior muscles of the thoracic wall, or lateral thoracic wall. And just quickly to mention, this posterior circumflex artery is another one of those anastomoses that uh, will uh, aid in circulation to certain areas if blood supply to that area gets cut off from another, uh, from another artery. So, uh, another anastomosis. All right, so continuing, uh, here's our suprascapular artery going to muscles in the suprascapular region, of course. Uh, transverse cervical artery, notice that is going along the medial border of the scapula. So we'll supply blood not only to that bone, but to the uh, muscles in the uh, subscapular region, along with the circumflex scapular artery coming around from the other side, anastomosing. Again, another uh, anastomosis. So if uh, this artery happens to get cut off, this artery can still supply this region of blood. Um, and the same thing with the uh, humor, circumflex humeral artery. We have an anterior portion and a posterior portion. If it gets cut off back here, the anterior can still supply blood to uh, the muscles surrounding the humerus. All right, remember veins generally, especially deep veins, generally follow the coursing of arteries. So the axillary vein uh, will course along with the axillary artery. And again, veins will always be going in this direction. And it will uh, eventually merge into the subclavian vein. So you have the basilic vein, remember that is medial and the cephalic vein, which is lateral, uh, both will empty into the axillary vein, and then of course the axillary vein into the subclavian vein. We've already talked about the lymphatics. Uh, this is just a reminder. Uh, definitely go back to the upper limb overview and the lymphatic slide that lays out all of the lymph nodes that you should be familiar with uh, when you're doing your physical exam. So this is just a summary. Uh, the other slide is uh, more comprehensive and the one you should focus on when uh, looking at lymphatics of the axillary region. All right, and one last part of the uh, axilla would be the axillary process of the mammary, of the breast, um, axillary process of mammary glands, uh, if you will, depending on, on if you're talking about the breast as a whole or specifically the mammary glands. And notice that that wraps around uh, the axilla where it becomes the axillary process. This is also known, and this is how it's going to be labeled in your physical exam lab, as a tail of Spence. Actually, S should be capitalized because Dr. Spence <laughs> uh, discovered this. Um, and it's important to remember this in females because when you are doing a breast exam, 
you definitely want to feel along the axillary process to ensure that you didn't miss any potential uh, lumps that could be identified as cancerous um, that would go undetected otherwise. So uh, really important to make sure that you always, always, always consider the axillary process of a breast. So again, this is the second time that this has been mentioned. Um, so important to keep uh, in mind going forward and definitely to teach your patients.